And the Lord said, I will bring you up out of the afflictions of Egypt unto a land flowing with milk and honey. Flowing with milk and honey. If we keep in our hearts our faith in his word. Why have we got to live here? Why can't we leave the ghetto? You can, but whether you live here in poverty or outside the walls in a palace, you will always pay the price of our heritage. Always? Who are we to question the ways of the Lord? Perhaps. Someday the walls will crumble, like the walls of Jericho, and all the world will be one people. Pardo. I shall have my coachman thrashed for his carelessness. Oh, no. There's no need to be so unkind. You are right. I should reward him for having caused so charming a delay. Repuse them. Jews. Lovely girl, who are they? The Prince of Tarn in Texas and his daughter, Marie August. Jew haters. A Christian child was murdered in their country, and naturally a Jew was burned for it. Ah, old fables, Landauer. 300 years ago. We are writing now 1730. So what? <laughs> they did it in 1430, they can do it in 1730, they can do it in 1830, they can do it in 1930. Who is going to stop them? You? <laughs> With your silk stockings and ruffles and buckles and attendants up behind? I want position. Respect, not for my sake only, but for the sake of all of us. I want power. You young folk, <laughs> can't you understand that real power lies in never showing it? Look at my countess in Wiltford for whom I do business. She has had power for 20 years. She made a fuss of it, and now... <laughs> What's that? Field Marshal Carl Alexander. Your Highness, this is a great honor. Then I hope you make me comfortable. Can any dispatches arrive for me? No, Highness. These damn politicians, they're a curse on the country. Yes, Highness. Your picture, Highness, it hangs in every room. Ah, what a victory. Magnificent. Magnificent? Schnorr. What you mean? A member of the Ducal House of Württemberg? A poor relation. Maybe a second cousin. Schnorr. Not good for a thousand gulden. I know. I refused him alone once. He has even got only one good foot. He was wounded at Belgrade. He's a great general. What you want me to do? Make a war for him? <laughs> I have other troubles. Me! The greatest field marshal of the empire, kept waiting by a pack of moldy politicians. Yes, Highness, 
Anyone would think I'd ask for the duchy itself instead of a small increase to my pay? Ha! The victor of Belgrade, treated as though he were a junior ensign. I'll not stand for it. I'll come. A runner from the Prince of Tern and Texas reminding your highness that he's expecting the honor of your company at the Fantasy's Ball tonight. I'd better see about a costume, highness. If I might be permitted, I, I think I could arrange that. Fancy dress ball. And I hope. Fancy dress ball. <laughs> Fancy dress. Fancy. <laughs> well, why not? Got no money? Might as well amuse myself. Women like me. Got more sense than those politicians, eh, Neufer? Yes, Highness. Mm, pretty girl, that Mario Goose. Wouldn't mind taking her back to Belgrade with me. Mm. Wonder if she'd come. Got too much money. Come. Here it is, Highness. Fresh from Paris. Imported by one of my guests. A gentleman of taste, as your Highness can see. Hmm. What's the gentleman's name? Uh, uh. Well, what's his name? Well, actually, Joseph Zeus Oppenheimer, Highness. Never mind, Neufer. <laughs> it's a very nice costume. Hmm. How much did you charge him for the costume? My dear Landau, I was only too happy to oblige His Highness as one gentleman to another. Come in. From His Royal Highness, we are keeping the one moment. For your trouble. You may be a gentleman to yourself. You may be a gentleman to your mother. I might even let you be a gentleman to me. But to a gentleman, you ain't no gentleman. There's Belgrade. Here are the Turks. And here am I with my 700 halberdiers. As you can see, we were practically surrounded. There's only one way we could go. And that's what? Forward. <laughs> my standard bearer was just in front of me. As the wind unfurled the flag, I could see the motto of my house. Attempto! I dare. An inspiration, my dear field marshal. But tonight, I wish that I had a different motto, Caesar's motto, Vene Vidi Vici. You came to fall. Ah, but have I any chance of conquering? I've been longing for a breath of fresh air. May I have the honor to accompany you? Oh. Yes, yes, sir. If I may be allowed to say so, Your Highness, a finely matched pair. Thank you. In Belgrade with me, they would treat you like a queen. A queen? Does that mean nothing to you? Oh, yes. But so much would depend upon the king. Oh, I see. I'm not romantic. Ah, oh. have I said that? And you mean? I mean you've given me a great deal to think about. And now you must take me back to my father. Well, I'm very 
very tired. If you don't mind, I think I'd like to go home. As you say, daughter, I have had enough. Who's that man? It's all merely a Jew. My name is Josef Zeus Oppenheimer. The Weissensee has done business with him. Oh, Josef Zeus Oppenheimer? <laughs> now we'll have some fun. Hmm. I nearly gave you a beating because of that ducat, Zeus. Then, Your Highness, I should not have been in bad company. Has not Your Highness beaten the Marshal of France? You trim your words as neatly as if you'd studied in Versailles. I have, Your Highness. Uh -huh. Are you one of the Viennese Oppenheimers? Only a third class. I'm glad you're no closer. They just refuse me alone, gentlemen. Or they have no concept of how to treat a great gentleman. <laughs> I like you, Zeus. <laughs> You're not really going. Oh, yes. I want to think about Belgrade. Then I shall go to the gambling room and try to win a fortune. For you. If your highness will give me the honor. Thank you, Zeus. Well now, four thousand. Very well, four thousand. Your highness wins. Come on, again. Sent for me because of the child. It is not because of the child. You promised to take her, Joseph. Yes, yes, I know, but, but not yet. It wouldn't be good for me, not good for the child. I have a thousand things to settle. I, I'm pushed and driven to. Why and don't you I... want the world to know that you were married, that you were happy once? But Leah died when the child was born. I ought to curse when she makes me speak of you. I find myself blessing you for her sake. Naomi is now 15. Yes, but don't you see it wouldn't be fair to her? She's so young, so innocent. You can shelter her better than I. She is making for herself an imaginary father out of what I have told her. Now she wants to see the real one. I shall bring the child to a quiet house in the country, near you. No, but... Where and when I shall bring her, I shall let you know in due course. Where a nice first promise! I come to pay you my debts. You bought me luck, Zeus. Ah, so you have a visitor. Yes. This is His Highness, the Field Marshal Prince Karl Alexander, and, and this is Highness, my uncle, our teacher, Rabbi Gabriel van der Straten. Oh, a Jewish rabbi, eh? A magus, a sorcerer, an alchemist. Can you make gold? No, I cannot make gold. Well, I'm very interested in alchemistic experiments. I am not rich. Your nephew knows that, but if you care to come back to Belgrade with I me... I am no maker of gold. You can't deny me that, Magus. Tell me what you read in it. Speak up! I beg you to excuse me. Come on, I'm not afraid. I've stood in a hundred battles. I fought a duel for a pocket handkerchief. You think I can't stand it if an old Jew foretells trouble for me? I beg you to excuse me. Say on! 
I see a first and a second event. The first I will not tell you. The second is a ducal crown. <laughs> you lay it on thick, Sir Magus. <laughs> a ducal crown with my cousin, the Duke, still very much alive, and a grown-up crown prince as well. <laughs> a ducal crown! <laughs> what I told you still holds good. <laughs> what was the other thing you saw? Oh, yeah. Your uncle is not very courteous, Zeus. Mm, you must excuse him, Highness. He is morose and peculiar. But, but what the... was the thing he refused to We tell. can forget that, Highness. You see, my uncle is a visionary. Events which to him are real, to us as men of the world, are only uh, ludicrous fancies. The Duke of Crown. That is real. Real, huh? <laughs> How much will you advance me on this Ducal Crown? I am at your Highness's disposal with all that I possess. Very well, Zeus. I take you at your word. Buy me a present for the beautiful Marie Auguste. Something worthy of a princess. Announce yourself to my levee tomorrow as the keeper of my privy purse. Highness, at your Highness's service. What's that? The present. Mille tonnerre! You must be mad. Your Highness instructed me to get a present worthy of a princess. Yes, but not this. It must be worth a fortune. I cannot afford to pay thirty or forty thousand gulden. Certainly not, Highness. How much? Oh, one thousand gulden at your Highness's convenience. How dare you, Zeus, insult me by taking the right to offer me presents? News from Belgrade? There's news, Highness, but from the capital. From Stuttgart? Your cousin, the reigning duke, was thrown from his horse yesterday. Is he hurt? He was killed, Your Highness. Killed? They say his back was broken. Leave me! But, Highness... I'll see you later. Leave me! So, you're getting excited, are you, Zeus? But don't forget the crown prince. He won't die so conveniently. What are you aiming at? This is pure chance. No, Highness. No chance. But a mysterious knowledge. An infallible and unshakable instinct tells me that my faith is linked to yours. Completely. With all that I have and all that I possess. Just as I am bound to you, so you are bound to me, Karl Alexander. Look at these. Five hundred of the old Duke and the Crown Prince all wasted. How was I to know they'd both go and die within a fortnight? <laughs> oh, well, here we are.
Gentlemen, when the untimely death of my predecessor and his son, in a rapid succession, made me Duke, my oath of allegiance to the Constitution bound me, amongst other duties, to defend our country against her enemies. How can I do that without a proper army? Oh, <laughs> Highness, we cannot afford a larger army. We've got to afford it. The people cannot pay, Highness. What were the late Duke's extravagances, the coronation expenses, and your personal requirements? The treasury is empty. Well, fill it, you hear me? Fill it! Yes, and you gentlemen can all wriggle in your chairs till the seats of your britches are worn out. But with or without your help, I intend to raise and maintain an adequate standing army. Well, Duke, what have you been doing lately? Affairs of state, Highness. You're such a charming liar. Lord Suffolk, how dare you? I declare you were actually trying to see my feet. No, no, Your Highness. I assure you. Where's my Jew? Good morning, husband. You here again? Well, of course, Lord Suffolk's here. My father always said to me, choose an Englishman. They're as discreet as they're clean. Come along, Zeus. What do you want to leave me alone with those half-wits for? They've no idea of progress, the old fools. They can't even realize that we need a bigger army. Hmm. If they are so old, so petty, then we must do without them. I have prepared a scheme which will give us a powerful army, then everything will follow in its train. As your highness will see, it does not involve increased taxation. It's only uh, a system of fines. Mm, you're a clever Jew. Thank you very much, highness. <laughs> what a pleasure! I've been waiting for months for you to come and see me. <laughs> Rapturous! Who are them? Oh, Aristotle, Homer, Solomon, Moses. Poor Moses never looked like that in all his life. <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you around, Landau. Hello, I'll show you my bedroom. Landauer, that's the Michelangelo. She is still too fat. <laughs> <laughs> I can understand you having this big house with a lot of servants who do nothing but wear out uh, expensive uniforms. I can't even understand that naked woman, although she is too fat. If you must ride, ride on a white horse. But, but what does it you want with a parrot? Pardon, Excellency. The Rabbi Gabriel has sent word 
The house is in Hirsau. In Hirsau. You are beautiful, Naomi. Like your mother. You are just as I always knew you would be. Just as Uncle Gabriel told me. How long were you going to stay with me? As long as I possibly can. I know. So difficult. Everybody wants you. But I want you too. I know everybody worships you. The Duke must be so kind. I've heard all the wonderful things you're doing for the people. Now you're a soldier. Aren't you proud to fight for your Duke? Charge! About turn! Forward! So happy, dear. Will you come back? As soon as ever I can. How soon? I can't promise exactly when. But I will come. Excellency. Uh, yes, yes. Goodbye, Mel. Goodbye. Meeting? Yes, Excellency. No one saw it? No one, Forgive me for having disturbed you, but I had to make sure you were real. Please. Don't go. At least, let me escort you. Here's so a large forest and a lonely one. It might be safer for you, I should but... be perfectly safe. I know every part in the forest. Has he been invited? But I, I didn't know His Excellency had a daughter. <laughs> yes, he has. And sees that an invitation is sent out to her immediately. Very good, Excellency.
Enchanting, Your Highness. Thank you. More beautiful than ever, Your Highness. Thank you. How are you, Don Pedro? Mm-hmm. I trust Your Highness will be delighted. She really sings beautifully. <laughs> <laughs> So many guests to entertain. Yes, but only one whom I enjoy entertaining. All the others are just duty. Will you forego the music and come with me? But I beg you, do me the favor of coming to the winter garden. It's quiet and cool there. Since I saw you, my thoughts have been full of you. Your face has come between me and my work, staring up at me, out of the documents on my desk. It sounds almost as if Your Excellency knew those words by heart. How can I convince you that I am sincere? Will you answer me a question? Have you thought of me at all? Yes. Ah, there you are. I've been looking for you everywhere. May I have the honor of presenting to your highness the Demoiselle Weissensee? Oh, look at my sweet car. Oh, no. It is I who should be kissing your hand. I believe he's poaching on the Dew's preserves. Oh, what a shame. Let's have a good turn. So soft, beautiful. Her Royal Highness requests the pleasure of the Demoiselle Weissensee's company immediately. The lost president's daughter. Well, what does that matter? She is young. She's never been to court before. Oh, so that's it, is it? You watch your eye on her for yourself. You sly dog, you. No, no, Highness, you misunderstand. I just feel. Enough, you! I shall wait for her in your room. Rather a headache, Highness. Doubtless the excitement of meeting your Duke. Yes, uh, 
Sometimes my husband is almost overwhelming. Your Highness has everything she requires. Naturally, do I'm in your house. I was just recapturing my sensations at my own first ball. This young young widow, dear. She's positively exhausted with all the excitement. Why don't you take her away and try and get some color back into her cheeks? May I offer you a glass of wine? Oh, no, thank you. I shall be all right now. Oh, it's so quiet here. We meet again, demoiselle. Don't let me keep you, Zeus. You have duties to your guests. I will entertain the demoiselle. I, I must go. My father is... Demoiselle. Oh, Excellency, I'm looking for my daughter. Oh, the demoiselle is resting in a quiet and cooler room. She has a slight headache. But I understood that you were with her. I was. Perhaps, perhaps I'd better go to mm, Quite unnecessary, my Lord President. His Highness himself is attending to the demoiselle. Please, sit down and have a glass of wine with me. I'm very glad to have the chance of a word with you. Tonight, His Highness spoke to me in the most glowing terms of his regard for the Lord President of his Council. I think promotion and honor. We have a beautiful house at Hearsal. We are always happy together there, my daughter and I. We walk among my vineyards out in the forest, come back and sit over the fire. As matters stand now, my Lord President, I dare promise you quite definitely honors and promotion. The Domoiselle Weissensee will attend at her convenience. It is most gracious of you to receive me, Demoiselle. I am obeying His Royal Highness's wish. 
on his royal highness's instructions i am to hand you this democrat please convey to his royal highness my grateful thanks for his presence you make yourself quite clear the royal messenger is dismissed may joseph zeus remain i have borne so much i can endure this also you are at least honest magdalene sibyl i will be honest too you think i failed you i did but i can't help myself Ever since I was a little boy in the ghetto, I have suffered everything, sacrificed everything for power. I can allow nothing, neither friendship, nor sorrow, nor pity, nor, nor love to prevent me following my star until the end. And now, may the Jew be permitted to retire. Done enough. Come. Come inside. It's the Passover. I can't find my girl. My babette. I've searched everywhere for her. Everywhere. But I, I found this. That's blood on that. Blood. I found it by Seligman's stall. The Jews' stall. Isn't tonight their Passover? Don't they need Christian blood? <laughs> Elijah, the prophet.
three weeks now that poor Seligman has been in prison. Soon they will torture him to make him confess, and then they will hang him. Old fables, you said. Can't happen, you said. Well, it has happened. And again, I ask you, what are you going to do, Joseph? But it's only you can save him. Mm, it's not so easy. You are thinking of the fate of one man only. I have to think of all jewelry. When such responsibility rests on my shoulders, I must make sure that I don't sacrifice everything gained for a small point. A small point? A Jew in danger of his life is a small point. And you could prevent it with one word to your duke. You want me to go back and say Joseph Suisse is a traitor? That's not true. Haven't I already done enough for jewelry? I know, I know. You have filled a synagogue, a hospital, a school or two. Good. You have given money to the poor. Good. I also give money. Who doesn't? I have done much more. If I had deserted Jewry and turned Christian, how easy it would have been for me to have become the first man in the empire. But I remain the Jew. I've never denied it. I am a Jew. Then show yourself to be one. But now, now, now. I can't settle anything today. I must think it over carefully. Might not be opportune. Opportune? To save a Jew who is guilty of nothing but being a Jew. Very well. Let Seligman die. He will not be the only one. Once they are let loose, they will kill and torture all of us, except Joseph Zeus, who sacrificed his race for his house, for his lackeys, for his golden braid. Is it true that you are willing to let an innocent man die rather than risk your own personal advancement? No, no. It isn't true. Surely you understand. The child does not understand. She has heard that one word from you to the Duke can save this man's life. You, her beloved father. So great, so good. Pillar of Jewry. A pillar of Jewry, she say? I will show her that my power has not been striven for in vain. I will do it now. And then I go to the child. Before you see the child, go first and see your mother in Frankfurt. Well, your highness has told me so many times that any favor I might like to ask would be granted. May I remind your highness, I have never availed myself of your gracious offer. But today, I have come to ask... Oh, now, Zeus, you've ruined everything. I wanted it to be a surprise for you. Look. Letter to the Emperor, asking him to make you a noble. In my own handwriting, too. I am overwhelmed. But this wasn't the favor I wished to ask your highness. What? It's not enough. What do you want? I want Seligman. Seligman? Who's Seligman? Seligman is innocent. As your highness very well knows, in the name of justice, I ask your highness to grant him his freedom. 
How dare you come to me and plead for this crawling child murderer? He is no murderer. There's no evidence. I must therefore repeat my request for his freedom. You fool! What do you want to get mixed up in all this for? It's not Zedek man they're after, but all the Jews. And you, in particular. I realize to the full the truth of what you say. But I still want Seligman. Have you no gratitude for all that I've done for you? How can you have the effrontery to stand there and calmly ask me for this? Once and for all, Zeus, keep out of this. Don't be a fool. I'll get you your patent of nobility from the Emperor, and your future is assured. Do you think you're indispensable to me, that you can insult me to my face? Do you think because I made you my financial counselor? That appointment no longer stands. Huh? I ask you to accept my resignation. I shall leave today. Ah, oh, very well then. Take your blasted Jew. But mark my words. Someday you will answer for this. So expensive, <laughs> so rich. <laughs> Say something to them. more can a man hope for than to be able to help his people. But now I must ask you to excuse me. There's one here who has an even greater claim on me than you. My mother. You will not grudge me a few hours with her, will you? The way they treat you. You might be the emperor himself. <laughs> Have you told him? The Gabriel, not now. He's only just arrived. And the paperwork. He should be told now. Fetch the papers.
what's all this? What are you talking about? Why this air of mystery? Read this. But I don't understand. These are letters. Love letters to my mother. From Marsha von Heidersdorf. Jacob Oppenheimer loved your mother. He met her three months before you were born. He married her and regarded you as his son. It can't be. You don't mean... Yes, Joseph. Marshal von Heidersdorf, my father. Marshal von Heidersdorf. Then I am not a Jew. Marshal von Heidersdorf's son. All my slaving and scheming and suffering. You, you tell me this now, now, after I have saved Seligman, after I have become the greatest of all the Jews, the only Jew who, in spite of being a Jew, has more power than any nobleman in Germany. Joseph, what are you going to do? Ugh, I don't know. I... Go to the child. She will tell you. This is the house, Your Highness. And behind that fence is hidden my little surprise. Well, come on, then. What are we waiting for? The gate is this way, Your Highness. Oh, never mind about the gate. Neufer, give me a leg up. You came in all this as if you were in church. Neufer, see if you can find some wine. I feel like a glass of wine. Should we not have a look at the other rooms first, Your Highness? Jew has kept this to himself. He's hidden it from me, the scoundrel. Mm, a little peach. The demoiselle is the daughter of our good Jew. That highness was my little surprise. A masterpiece of a girl. An oriental dream. What is your name, demoiselle? Shulamite Salome? Don't be afraid. I'm not going to eat you. Naomi, the child. Ah, Naomi. I am really your sovereign. You and your father's lord and duke. Come here and kiss the hand of your sovereign, Naomi. Kiss the hand of the duke, child. And now, you shall drink to the health of your duke, Naomi. Naomi! <laughs> a child! Naomi! That was a real surprise, my it? <laughs> Cunningly arranged. <laughs> we'll have some fun out of the Jew over this. <laughs> <laughs> they are beautiful, these Jewesses in their youth. They seem the best of all. Unique. Mm. 
Make my excuses to the others, I see. Tell them not to wait. Send the carriage back for me later. Don't be frightened, child. Don't be stupid. Devil. <laughs> How'd you manage to get here, eh? Before. I've seen a thousand corpses on the battlefield, men who died through me. Why should I be afraid of a little dead Jewess? I can come away, Highness. No, no, no. It looks though I'm afraid of the Jew. Find the carriage. Dispatch it to Zeus. Tell him to meet me here without delay. But, Highness. No other message. Is the Duke guilty of her death? You are guilty of her death. If I had gone away with her, far away, very. Can I speak to her? If you set your feet upon the right path, then she will have peace. wishes to speak to you.
Be a man, Zeus. Do not give way to your grief. I have seen the girl. I know what she was to you. I understand. But you still have other things in your life. You have the favor of your duke. Let it be a comfort to you. Yes, my lord duke. Truly and sincerely, I'm sorry for you. But if you think I had anything to do with it, I assure you you're on the wrong track. Who would have thought that the girl would misunderstand a little joke? Yes, my lord duke. I don't want anything to come between us. Don't bear me a grudge. Give me your hand. Here. Now, bury your dead. Then hurry back to us at Stuttgart. You see how sly I have become? I shook his hand. He couldn't understand. Hurry back to Stuttgart. Does he hope to buy me off? With honors? Money? Wrong, my lord Duke! Wrong, my lord murderer! Wrong! 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 Your Excellency is satisfied? It is very good. Ah, there you are! We, uh, <laughs> we thought we'd pay you a little surprise visit. <laughs> Your man tried to make up that you were engaged. Tell us, Dewey, is it a lady? Oh. Hardly ever see you at the palace nowadays. I'm very busy, Highness. Oh, I'm not complaining, man. I don't want to lose touch with you. You've always been a faithful minister, but we used to be friends as well. Your Highness flattered me. Oh, as long as you realize that I'm not ungrateful. The more you do for me, Zeus, the more you will benefit. No malice, eh? Where's the pretty girl, hmm? Who is she? My daughter. Your daughter? I never knew you were married. Well, no doubt you're wise to keep her out of the way. Carl is so very susceptible, isn't he? She's dead, Highness. Yes, yes. Um, a great tragedy. Quite recent, too. I, I forgot to tell you about it. So many things to think about. Well, we'd, uh, we'd better be going. Zeus has work to do. Poor Zeus. Not even your grief can interfere with your work. My grief will only make me work the harder. That's right. That's right. For our mutual benefit, eh? Now, I'll show you the confidence I have in you. I'll appoint you finance director. You shall sign all edicts yourself and be answerable to no man. Oh. Good night, Mr. Finance Director. Good night, Highness. Ah, your man shall show us out. You must get back to your desk. Karl Alexander, Duke of Württemberg and Peck. Württemberg and Peck declare that should emergency taxes not be paid in full immediately upon demand, this train shall be made upon the goods and chattels of the householder in question 
up to the value of twice the amount of the unpaid taxes. Continue your speech. What is the storm line you are going to take? Huh? I'm waiting. Father, Excellency, I, I did not think I... You wretch, you! You dare to insult your duke and his ministers? Back to your houses, every one of you, and learn this lesson once and for all. Your first duty under the Constitution is to respect and obey your duke. Get out! Your humble servant, Highness. May I repeat, Highness, your humble servant, Zeus, you've got me into a pretty mess. Why in hell's name have you tightened the screw just lately? Have you lost your cleverness? Before long, you'll turn the whole country against me. The council are buzzing round me like hornets to get rid of you. If your highness has more confidence in the gentlemen of the council... What, sir? I do not care to give my services where they are not wanted. How can you say that when I adjourn the council without answering them? How dare you stand there complaining when I stick by you in the teeth of all my ministers, in the teeth of all my people? Stick by me, Highness, because you know that I alone can help you to be a king, perhaps even an emperor. And second, Alexander the Great. Yes, but surely there must be some way without flouting the Constitution. Constitution? <laughs> if it stands in your way, Clear it up. You mean... Yes, take back the right which God gave you, and which has been stolen from you by the so-called Constitution. Be in reality the ruler of your country. Be Württemberg. How can it be done? The plan is here. You will spend next Tuesday night in your hunting lodge with your Major von Röder and your household cavalry. At the given hour, General Remschingen will arrest all the leaders of the Constitutional Party, he will then disarm the militia, occupy the parliament, and on Wednesday morning, King Karl Alexander will enter Stuttgart. Here's a list of people to be arrested. It's possible. Why, heaven, it can be done. It's all here. Yes. But a password may be needed. Hmm. I have it. My own motto. A tempo. I dare.
Charming. All the more since your visit is so unexpected. There's no time for gallant speeches, Zeus, and no need for them. I brought you this. The list of arrests I gave His Highness. How did you get it? His Highness paid me the honor of visiting you this evening. He was very triumphant and very drunk. He drank still more, then flourished that paper at me. When I'd read it, I arranged that he should forget to take it away. Werner Staatsmann, Don von Corbo, Ernest Pflug, Josef Süß Oppenheim. <laughs> Josef Süß Oppenheim. <laughs> the old fox. The old treacherous fox. Did you bring this to me because my name was on it? Yes. Why? Because every day since that time, I've been listening to my heart beating out three words. I hate him, I hate him, I hate him. And then suddenly tonight, when I saw your name on that paper, I realized those were not the words. No man has ever been more vile to a woman than I have been to you. I deliberately destroyed what might have been in spite of all that, you bring me this tonight. And in return, I can still give you nothing. But you will save yourself. You won't let You me... needn't fear for me, nor for your father. That at least I can promise you. But I, I must still follow my star, wherever it leads me. But follow it I must. Storm and the bad roads, Highness. He'll be here in a minute now. Ah, no, sir. Is it the courier? No, Highness. Your medicine. Ah, uh, give it to me. Where's the wench? In your private cabinet, Highness. She's been there two hours. I suppose she can wait, can't she? Business before pleasure. Some more wine, Highness. No. My doctor says. Yes, to hell with the doctor! Let me till I'm weak as a rat. Says that I carry too much blood. Oh, nonsense. Go on, give me some wine. Ah, I can't taste the stuff till I've heard the news. A 
There's nothing to worry about, Highness. The plan is foolproof. Of course it is. Didn't my cue work it out for me? <laughs> That's a funny part. That he should have worked it out. And now he's... Good here, Highness. I'll see him myself. General Remschingen has not arrested me. No one has been arrested tonight at Stuttgart except General Remschingen. It was a people's militia who used the password at help door, and it is your royal troops who have been disarmed. In short, Highness, the coup d'etat has failed. Did you? Did you? Yes, Highness, I did. Escape me by dying, would you? But I won't let you die until you have listened to me. And you, you killed my child. And as I faced you across her dead body, because I didn't spring at you and squeeze your butcher's throat, you believed you had escaped my vengeance, you wretched sot. This has been my vengeance. Made you dream of being a king, a Caesar, an emperor, and then to show you what you really are. Just an absurd lump of flesh, utterly ridiculous to, to yourself and the whole world. All the time, we could have been friends, Karl Alexander. If you had fostered in me the best instead of the worst, there would have been no end to what we could have done together. <laughs> you great prince and hero. <laughs> <laughs> the Duke is dead. be king of Württemberg now? A child in arms? The People's Party will retain power. We should join them. Whatever we do, we look like falling between two stools. It's the very devil, I say. You don't seem to see quite clearly what you should do in, in this unusual situation. Arrest me, then you are safe, whoever comes out on top. In 
in the name of the Duchess and of the Constitution, I arrest you, Jew. I confess to having been a loyal servant to my master, our late Duke, the head of the state, according to the very constitution to which you, gentlemen, are professing such an ardent loyalty. If that is treason, then, gentlemen, I am being tried by treason. Stop quibbling, Jew. You can't escape a ride to hell in the gallows cart. Better save your time and ours by giving us a good, respectable confession. You put it so charmingly that you almost tempt me to confess to things I haven't done. After all, you can't hang me higher than the gallows, can you? In law, we have no case. I warned you of this from the beginning. You have no chance of hanging him on any of the charges. Oh, yes, I have. The president, that law is forgotten, out of date. It has not been enforced for 200 years. It's still on the statute book. And I can think of no man to whom it should be more applicable than Jew Zeus. Have you had carnal relations with Christian women? I had no idea that I was facing a court of morals. But if the court requires a complete list of all my transgressions since I arrived at manhood, together with the ladies' names and their addresses, I can only refuse. You've heard the prisoner's own admission. Under Article 47 of the Penal Code, it is clearly laid down that a Jew who has relations with a Christian woman should suffer death. Gentlemen, if you wish to condemn me to death on this score, I admit you can do it. The entire Holy Roman Empire Laugh! But not at me. Please, Hannes. <coughs> My late son-in-law, Carl Alexander, was a fool. I always realized that. But you are not. So, uh, shall we say for my daughter's sake? I have decided to help you regain your freedom. Highness, of my own free will, I exchanged my palace for this cell. Obviously, then I must have had good reasons for such an exchange. Your Highness, mille merci. Zeus, don't be a large-sized fool. What's your object? To die for posterity, to be a martyr? My dear fellow, nowadays, it's just not done. I have arranged everything. There is just one very small condition I have to make, but it will cause you the minimum of inconvenience. Merely that you become a Christian. <laughs> Once before in my life, Highness, I was faced with this problem. I went for guidance to the only person I thought could help me. What that person was, was not there. From that moment I knew my problem had ceased to exist. To her I had always been a Jew. Therefore, a Jew I shall remain. Your Highness, mille merci. mother of the reigning duke? Certainly, Highness. But when the reigning duke is an infant in arms, the constitution lays down the country shall be governed by a regent. By the vote of the council, I am appointed regent during your child's minority. Oh. So 
after all, Tom's very stupid and complicated. I really don't understand it. I wish the Jew was here to advise me. Well, that is quite impossible, Highness. The Council are waiting your attendance to sign the process for his death. I've already had General Remchen and... I'm not at all sorry to hear that. I never did care for that man. Compared with the Jew, he was a positive bore. Oh, Greta, you can't leave that veil like that. It looks like a piece of string. I don't want him here. Why can't he work for me as he did for my husband? That, Highness, is quite impossible. There will be a revolution in the country within 24 hours. Oh, well, it's your affair, not mine. You're the regent. Oh, Greta, you stuck that pin right into my head. All the same, it's a nuisance without him. I shall miss the Jew. He was such an amusing man. And very loyal to poor Carl. I remember how it snowed when Lee arrived. I had never seen a grave before. I dreaded it. I always imagined it as a cruel, ugly gash in the greedy earth. But the snow had turned it into a glistening white hollow. So soft, so kind. That all my fear left me and I was at peace. And then, when I came home, there was a little white bundle in it, the child, Naomi.
shall see if we can't hang you higher than the gallows.